Today we're gonna answer the question what memory you should get for your PC build and which motherboard is the best once and for all. Why $180 DDR5 is a complete scam and what makes 64 gigabyte memory so appealing. Intel 13th gen CPUs use dual memory controller to support both DDR4 and DDR5 modules. Which sets the question, hmm, but why? We have record breaking speeds with DDR4 memory plus DDR5 requires voltage regulator to be placed right here on the memory stick versus DDR4 where you have voltage regulator on the motherboard. Wouldn't that complicate things? On DDR5 in charge of power is power management integrated circuits. Pim Since PIMIC is right here in the module, it helps to deliver cleaner energy and stronger signaling. Well, in theory, DDR5 does not overclock well currently. So the only benefit is power efficiency. Uh-huh. Specification for DDR4 is 1.2 volts, where DDR5 requires 1.1 volts. For someone like you and I, makes no difference. But in scale, it could mean huge power savings. Since motherboard manufacturers don't have to deliver power delivery network to the memory, you would think that would be cheaper, right? <laughs> You wish. The first motherboard we're gonna look at is Asus Prime Z790-P Wi-Fi D4. On the previous test of Z690 chipset version, we know it's a solid choice on the budget. Budget of $240, that is. Then we have an MSI Mag Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, one of the best DDR5 motherboards on the market, retailing for 270 stones. As you can see, DDR4 board costs less than DDR5, even though it has more components. At this point, is our early adapter switches paying for R&D that came into designing all these memory traces and signal to noise ratio and CPU of choice is the budget king Intel Core i5-13500, not AMD Ryzen 5. Subscribe for that video. Let's start with DDR4 memory. Intel suggests clock of 3200, but this is how you overclock on Asus Prime Z790-P. Time Spy CPU test 13,616. Cinebench score 18,892. Shadow of the Tomb Raider frames rendered 5,576. Now, this is our base. Can we beat it with DDR5 memory? I don't know. Let's find out. Today, we have selection of two Patriot 32 gigabyte signature series 5600 MHz for $95, sometimes even cheaper, and Patriot Viper Venom DDR5 7400 MHz for whopping $180. 5600 MHz result time spy CPU test 14,269. Cinebench score 17777. Shout out the Tomb Raider 5754. It's very dependent on the workload. If you're a designer or a developer, much tighter timings on DDR4 memory helps so much. That's 6% difference in Cinebench for free. DDR5 ahead of DDR4 in gaming by 5%. But that's, but that's not fair. DDR4 is overclocked. Let's fix that. This is how you overclock DDR5 on Intel platform. So if you're using board like MSI Tomahawk, you click F7, go to OC. Here's your DRAM frequency. So 6400 is confirmed stable speed of this memory. Now you have to watch your multiplier. You see that 1.33, 1.33? 1 1.33 1 .33 will modify your BCLK and the processor would not boost this high. The only difference between these two is G2 and G4. Gear 4 and gear 2 are your ratios. On the Intel system, memory controller is separate from the CPU. Now we can run this controller either half the speed of the memory or we can run the quarter speed of the memory. G4 is not recommended. G2 on the other hand is recommended spec. Again, it would make the memory controller run the half the speed of the memory. Now when it comes to voltage, people get a little confused what is safe and what it's not. And motherboard manufacturers will take care of you. Look, if I select 1.3 it's all nice and white. If I do 1.4, turns red. But we used to see 1.35 as a standard for overclock. Speaking of XMP profiles, this memory stick doesn't have any. It doesn't mean it doesn't overclock, but you will have to do it manually. Cast latency, 32. RCD read would be 38. RCD write is not available, 38 and 96. So we set the bus speed of the memory, 6400 MHz. We set to the gear two, which makes the memory controller run at the half the speed of the memory. 
we set the timings that I've tested, and then we put a little bit more voltage into it. And let's see if it boots. Like any other component, memory has a lifespan. For example, this Viper memory has 1.45 voltage. Is it XMP profile? Is it safe? Yes, it is. But the memory wouldn't last as long. It wouldn't work for 15 years. It would only work for 10. If you're going for stability, stick to the spec. If you're going for gaming rig, who cares? Same sticks of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz. Time Spy CPU test, 14,503. Cinebench score, 17,593. Shout out the Tomb Raider, 58. 20. Wow, now it's 6% lead in gaming. Well, what if we use one of the fastest memory out there? Patriot Viper Venom DDR5 7400 megahertz. Oh, with a simple click of XMP profile, it doesn't work. With a little research, there's how they manage these speeds and timings. 36, 44, 44, 110, and voltage at 1.45. Yeah, no luck. But what if it's a processor? Why not? Here's Intel 13900K. And look, goodness, it boots. Does it work though? No, of course not, you dumbass. Got nothing to do with it. Now either you can get lucky with the motherboard or Patriot has some quality control issues. Let me know your opinion in the comment section. This Viper memory is only stable at 6800. Time Spy CPU test 15149. Cinebench score 16387. Shadow of the Tomb Raider 5812. Again, bandwidth is great for gaming. Timings, not so much. The moral of the story is just buy cheap, then overclock, or don't. $90 32 gigabyte DR5 is double in size and 5% faster than $60 16 gigabytes DDR4 memory. Another point is the difference between the best and the worst DDR5 result 6%. The difference in price, 100%. Boys, do not buy expensive DDR5 memory. It's not worth it. Now, as far as overclocking memory is a bit tricky. Sometimes Windows opens, but you could experience some random blue screens. So whenever you apply new settings, run 8064 stress test for at least half an hour. If you want to learn how to overclock memory and learn about the latency and settings, join our Discord server. So I'll let you know when I'm live. But what if you have $180? Let me introduce you $178 crucial 64 gigabyte kit. Mm. Listen, I do, I do camera work for a living. Here's the RAM utilization during the latest project. Lightroom loves RAM. It's just 4,800 megahertz. So let's overclock it. The most stable frequency for this particular copy is 5,400. Look, the difference between 64 and 32 gig memory is amount of DRAM chips. See how this side is completely empty and this one is populated? If one of these little DRAM chips doesn't want to clock at 5,600 megahertz, you have to step down. The physics of it is a little bit more complicated than that, but that's just the idea. Fascinating how it all works and I'll save the details for the live stream. 5400 Time Spy CPU test 14491 Cinebench 17899 Shadow of the Tomb Raider 58 26. This is the max win for productivity workloads. Even if you don't overclock memory, go for DDR5 memory. Either $90, 32 gigabyte, or $180, 64 gigabyte. Gamers, you all set with 32 gig memory sticks. Spend that extra 100 bucks somewhere else. CPU, for example. Video and photo editors, you have no choice but to stick with 64 modules. That's the reality. And do not overpay for some crap. Boys, join the Discord. You understand?